All right, you guys, here it is, HP tuners. It's about that time. We've already got the Rotofab Big Gulp installed. We got the LT5 intake. I already bought the licenses. We are about to write the tune to the ZL1 and essentially void the warranty. Let's get it. Tune is done. All right, let's take this baby out and we will start our part throttle tuning. All right, YouTube, we out here. We're data logging a little bit now. I'm doing part throttle math tuning. So basically like the first half of the RPM range. And so what that does is the way I set up the tune, it forces it to stay in closed loop. My car will not go to open loop. So right now I need to drive out to the gas station to get some more gas before we really get into tuning. But I should be able to do a lot of my part throttle math tuning and just get an idea of where we're at on my way out there. So that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of data logging out there. I'll hold the RPMs at different spots on the way out and then we'll get to the wide open throttle tuning a little bit later let's get it you can hear the rpms up right now because i'm holding it at 35 just getting my part throttle tuning in and i'll go up to like 4k right here so hopefully we got some good numbers in here let's see what this gas is talking about though Ooh, 480 man hopefully it's cheaper here pretty soon when we get the e85 but let's go ahead and get this fill up real quick 14 gallons 70 dollars sheesh all right y'all we're at the shell but we're tucked off in a little parking spot let's see what we're looking like here's math versus long-term fuel trends that was that's what we're going to be looking at and pretty damn positive all the way through so that means we're running a little bit lean that means that it's adding fuel to correct for the lean mixture not a big deal and it's pretty much what's expected with having the big gulp in the lt5 throttle body this is exactly why we're tuning so we'll go ahead and take these numbers we'll get them pasted into the graph for the math and then we'll go back to tuning again nice to get some real numbers though and get an idea of what things are looking like i had a ton of you guys jumping in my dms and my comments talking about oh you need a tune do not run that without a tune somebody was like it strictly states you need a tune i'm like yo y'all i've done this before i did not even go wide open throttle i drove the car like two times so appreciate everybody's concern but don't worry i got this part under control not saying i know it all because i definitely don't there's people out there that tune that are much smarter than me but basically my modifications is basic tuning so that's what i'm doing let's get into it i'm gonna get these numbers applied and let's get it y'all so just got our second tune put on for those of you guys that have tuned before i went ahead and multiplied by a whole percent because in some of the sales i was off as much as like seven eight percent so you know why did i do a bigger correction i want everything slightly rich anyways but just pulling out of the gas station i can already feel like a little bit more pep all the way down on that low end so it's like it's got a little bit more torque i'm noticing so that's nice again i'm not really getting into the throttle too much to really get a full picture of how much power i really picked up but when i did drive the car around without going wide open throttle uh like over the weekend man like the power difference was significant i put on plenty of cold air intakes in my life never have i put on a cold air intake that has made this kind of jump in horsepower same thing with throttle bodies too but i've also never had a supercharged application that i actually did all of that on especially a positive displacement supercharger so the way that it's sucking the air in is very much different than even how my pro charger did it so this car really benefits greatly as the video goes on the tuning will probably get a little bit more exciting because i'll be actually getting some pools in right now this is just all down low rpm stuff so i'll catch up with you guys when we're done and we'll check out the numbers okay real quick this is going to be our second time out data logging look at the numbers still a little bit high down low but then it really starts going down kind of normals itself out between that two to four range uh down here it gets even better so i'll go ahead and get these numbers inputted i think i'm going to multiply by a whole percent again until i get things kind of negative all right you guys so basically all the tuning i've done is for nothing something was a little bit off and i couldn't quite tell right away after about four tunes i finally figured it out so 
if you guys switch from an SS to a ZL1, the data points are totally different going along for the math hertz on the graph. So I had to go back in to my um, scanner, readjust how my graphs are reading and change the data points so that when I copy and paste that into the math sensor, it actually populates all the places. So right now what I'm doing is taking my very first tune that I made, putting that back on the car and just starting from there. I don't want to start from the stuff that I've already adjusted because some points populated, some points didn't. I just didn't want to deal with that headache of trying to get that figured out. So let's just start over. All right, you guys, we're looking so much better. Here's my first um, scan that I did when I went straight back to the stock tune that I had. Went in here, you could see everything's off. I mean, 10%, 10, 12%. Uh, upper eights, there's some lower two, three. So, I mean, things were pretty far off, you guys, as you can tell. And then here we go. This is just one run. Look how much better those numbers get. I mean, just barely positive. So, I really like that. Getting things much more dialed in. Um, hopefully, another one or two runs, and then we'll be pretty dialed in. You guys, changing these values right here up top, if you are on a ZL1, is a mandatory move. But uh, other than, and it actually looks like there's just way more data points that the Z01 logs for the math hertz than what they do on the SSs. So just a heads up, something that kind of threw me off, but I got it down. All right, so here we go, you guys. This is the last little bit of driving that I did before it started to get too dark. I needed to get back home. Anyways, it's all negative where we want it to be. Now, kind of in these upper hertz, I would like it to be maybe one percentage more negative all through here again my goal is kind of around two ish percent but again it also doesn't matter as much down here because things are closed loops so as long as i am reading negative slightly rich that is what we absolutely want so i may go back and just individually on some of these sales ultimately either way i was pretty happy with this i went ahead and turned everything back on in the tune so that on my drive home i would go into open loop um the only thing i did do is get into full throttle a little bit just to confirm in my tune that i turned everything back on so the car does transition back into open loop because man go check out the pro charger chronicles when i first got my pro charger tune and their tune would not go to open loop damn i'm glad i didn't blow that motor up one last thing about this tune that i do want to say is that i was sitting for like a cool minute and i was talking on the phone i'm talking five ten minutes i was sitting there and maybe like you know five ish minutes in or something like that the idle stumbled one time but it just stumbled once it came right back and then it just maintained steady so kind of weird but also not really tripping so i don't know what happened to the footage that i recorded but chasing down that slight misfire that i had at idle turned into an entire ordeal the next day. So I pulled apart the entire cold air intake because I'm just getting in this variation in my fuel fuel trims and I'm getting a little bit of a misfire, but only at idle. It doesn't happen anywhere else in the RPMs really. And the misfire is kind of random through all the cylinders. So I've got a feeling that I've got a slight vacuum leak or I possibly have a slight exhaust leak, but I only have a cap back. So I feel like that's kind of far for the air to travel back up and affect the sensors, but it's all possible. So from this point on, I have assumed in the footage that I'm recording that you guys already know this. All right, so we got the car up on the lift. Hold on, let me get a light. That piece right there, it's actually a piece of a glove covering the O2 sensor and I got it all zip tied out the way and I've got it attached to the upper O2 sensor because that is where I plan to put it initially. But actually, because I'm not really getting fully into tuning yet, I just wanna get things a little bit more dialed in. So if I accidentally do go, you know, wide open throttle or go into open loop, I want things to be kinda close. So for now, I'm actually gonna put my wideband sensor right here into the secondary O2 sensor. I know it's not ideal, you guys. I know the ideal spot is right there. It can be a little bit delayed being back here. Post cap may alter the readings, yada, yada, yada. Some say it's real, some say it's false. I've ran it back there and I know it's not absolutely ideal, but again, I just wanna get it sort of dialed in. And then once I've got it sort of dialed in, that is when I will take it out of that secondary port, move it up to the primary cat, 
and then begin to tune out of there, see how close the numbers actually are. But that's gonna be down the road because before you can ever get a tune completely knocked out, your car has to be running perfectly. So there can't be a vacuum leak. I want these plugs switched around. And until I do those two things, I won't be final, final tuning. So just a heads up, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and get this swapped out real quick. Go ahead and remove that secondary sensor altogether, put it in my toolbox, set it to the side. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I put it into that front O2 sensor, my car will stay in open loop all the time. I'll no longer have my narrow band sensors and I'm not always out here at the shop. I wanna be able to go back and forth between part throttle tuning and wide open throttle tuning and just have an idea of where I'm at. So I'm gonna get this swapped around, then we'll get this back on the road, let's get it. All right, YouTube, whole new day now. So we have been out data logging. I'm doing the wide open throttle math tuning. Um, I know I got like a little bit of a slight vacuum leak, but once I begin to get on the RPMs, it's really not that much of an issue. And so let's look at this wide open throttle tuning. I didn't record that much because I literally got this thing dialed in in two runs. <laughs> I mean, by the time I uploaded the third tune, it was good to go. And I did two runs on that and we've been a All right, you guys. So this is the third tune that I set up. Like I said, I made two runs. Um, I had the initial tune, made a run, adjusted, made a second run adjusted and then when i went back out there for the next run everything was dialed in so it was really only like two runs of dialing things in now i want to get this number here a little bit smaller but i mean at least things are drivable right now and then this number keeps ending up a slightly positive but i seriously think it's related to the d cell and just before i get on it to really start accelerating but then you look at the other numbers and i mean everything is money now something tripping me out like if you look it does make kind of big jumps here in terms of like the data plot points, but compared to my Pro Charger, it was like a lot more of a slower linear curve that went up as it built power. So when I did the wide open throttle tuning, we hit way more math cells than I do with a positive displacement one. Kind of interesting, but it is what it is. Not really tripping really happy to have things dialed in so like i said this is the first run i pulled over i looked at it, i'm like that looks all good so let me do another run to kind of confirm it and that would be this run here let's get down to 7500 math hertz and then bow when i went to make this run as you can see it looks like it's running super lean i wasn't able to get on it right away so i was kind of hesitating in um in fourth gear right around 3000 rpms and then it was a couple seconds after i was able to punch it go wide open throttle and do my pull that's why i'm pretty sure that this is all related to d-cell stuff now i do have everything turned off like the i don't know mess with the fuel on the d-cell i do have that stuff shut off so i don't think it should matter but i don't know i'm pretty sure that's what that's related to and look how much this number jumps and like i said i spent like three four seconds sitting at 3000 rpms on this one and then here's my first one where I was able to punch it almost immediately. And if you look, it's showing it's barely lean 1.62%. So, you know, I'll take it, you guys. I'm pretty happy with this. This is definitely not the final tune. This is just a tune so that I can drive this freaking sucker around and not have to stress about going wide open throttle. I want things more dialed in than this. We will get there. Um, but as I was saying earlier in this video, which was yesterday for me, to get a final tune in, you have to have every single possible vacuum leak taken care of. So I gotta see what's making my fuel trims off, what's making the RPMs jump a little bit, and then I'm gonna swap out all the plugs. So let's go ahead and I'll record a little bit on the drive home, see if I can get one wide open pool in there for you guys and then probably the next video will be like the first drive of me driving around with this tune and just getting used to it because all i've been able to do is just go on little small runs pull over hop on the computer man i'm super happy with how easy wide open throttle went and honestly even the part throttle was super easy i just i just kind of screwed myself with my histograms and all that stuff so all right let's go thing I noticed you guys is that this thing is really whistling in that upper RPM now. Woo! <laughs> 
my driving home is like all in town, so I don't know how much I'll get on to it, but I'll run the recorder, see if we get anything good. And if we don't, that's gonna do it for this video, y'all. This your boy ZT Zooming, and I'm out, baby. Peace.